There's been a lot of confusion around the release of Yarn version 2. And when I was researching it for this video, I found I had a lot of misconceptions myself. So this video is my best effort to clarify what's been going on with Yarn V2. So Yarn 2 was released to the world by this blog post that was written by the lead maintainer. And it is a pretty thick article. It is 15 minutes to read. And one of the reasons for that is it outlines all the features. And there are a ton of them, which is quite awesome. A lot of them are fantastic and very innovative. And I think everyone is in agreement there. Now there's too many to actually go through in this video, so I'm going to pick out one of the most interesting ones that is being added. And that is workspace constraints. Now the part of this feature that is bringing the attention to it is not what it actually does, but how you configure it. So Yarn2 ships with a new concept called constraints. Constraints offer a way to specify generic rules using Prolog, a declarative programming language. And then you can see here are two code snippets that they show here and here of configuring the constraints. So the first one here, they are making sure that you do not add underscore to your project. And then here, they're making sure, I guess in your package.json, that when you have a repository.type field, it needs to be git. And when you have a repository.url, it is matching this repository. I like this feature a lot, and one of the things that I want to do with it is make sure I use the same version across all my packages. So for example, if I want to make sure that I'm using React 16 across all of them, I can. And if I try to upgrade it or downgrade it, it will stop me. Or if I have a teammate that doesn't know and they try upgrading a package accidentally and they could break something, this is a constraint that you can add and make sure no one messes anything up, which is pretty handy. But this is catching everyone's attention because you configure it in Prolog, which is, as you can see, a little bit of a different style of programming language. And it is very odd that it is being paired with a JavaScript tool. So a lot of people are joking about how you now have to learn Prolog along with all the other things you have to as a web developer. And I agree, it is a bit awkward that you have to learn Prolog to write these. There's no doubt about that. But at the same time, I like that they chose this because everyone's going to have different constraints that they're going to want to write for their particular project. So this allows you to write these custom ones and give a lot of flexibility in what you actually want to constrain. And if they did not choose to use Prolog and maybe they use JSON or something like that, I think it would have been a lot uglier to write these constraints and a lot more constrained on the constraints you could write. So yeah, it is awkward that you have to write Prolog, but I think not everyone's going to need to write these constraints, um, but when they do need to write them, they're going to be able to write exactly the constraint that they want. And I don't think anyone was actually upset about this particular feature. It was just a little unexpected to see that it uses or is being configured in Prolog. But now we're going to get into where there's some disagreement about Yarn2. So Kent C. Dodds tweeted, Yarn2 is released. Hooray. Unfortunately, it's quite different from NPM, and as a maintainer of open source code, who doesn't like to force contributors to use the non-default tool? I just can't get myself to use it. Things in here are issues for me. And then he's linking to the migration guide for Yarn. So this guide tells you how you can go from Yarn 1 to Yarn 2, and there are a few steps that you need to actually do for this, including actually changing something in your IDE to get this to work. But at this point, you may be wondering, why is there even a big migration guide to go from Yarn 1 to Yarn 2? What is making it so different? And that is a particular feature it introduces. And that feature is plug and play. So this is something that totally gets rid of node modules and it is the default in Yarn 2. And there's a bunch of problems with node modules. So this is a big improvement. And I think everyone agrees here that plug and play is a huge improvement. And if you can use it, it's something that you want to use because it speeds up your installs. It speeds up the amount of space. It just, it just improves things in a lot of different ways. And you can check out this page if you want to see all the improvements. But the big problem is there are some libraries that depend on you having node modules or at least having that folder exist. And so when Yarn2 uses this plug and play feature and removes node modules, there are other libraries that break because they depend on this. 
This is in the Yarn 2 Migration Guide. It says, despite our best efforts, some tools don't work at all under plug and play environments, and we don't have the resources to update them ourselves. There are only two notorious ones on our list, Flow and React Native. So if you're using one of these libraries, you just straight up can't use plug and play, which is the default in Yarn 2. Now it's good to note, you can add a node modules plugin here, which will bring node modules back. You just add this line to your yarn RC file, um, but it comes with this caveat right here. It says, remember that this plugin is currently very experimental and we expect it to improve over time. So if you use Flow or React Native or some other library that doesn't work with plug and play, your only option to actually use Yarn 2 and to upgrade is to install this experimental node modules plugin. And this is the core of where the problem is. There is a chunk of users which just straight up cannot migrate to Yarn 2 because it defaults to plug and play and that is the main thing that they are supporting. And so there is a split between the people that can upgrade and the people that can't upgrade. And so there basically is a difference in opinions on how you should go about releasing Yarn 2 because of this rift, if you will, of the people that just straight up can't migrate over. And there's some pretty big players that are going to be unable to upgrade to Yarn V2. So Paul Armstrong, who is a tech lead at Twitter, tweeted, after looking through Yarn V2, we are probably going to have to either stay on V1 or recommend everyone at our company to switch back to NPM. Dan Abramov works on the React team at Facebook, and he tweeted, I think calling Yarn 1 legacy is a bit premature. We're still using 1x at Facebook, and there are no immediate plans to switch to 2x, as that would be a ton of work. There are cool ideas in 2x, though. So when I first read this tweet, I thought it was super awkward that Facebook, who creates React Native and creates Yarn, is not even upgrading to Yarn 2. Like, they made it so it's not compatible with React Native, and then they're not even going to upgrade? That didn't make any sense to me. And that is where I had my first big misconception. So Yarn is not operated by Facebook anymore. And that's where I thought they were operated by Facebook still. So despite the first version of Yarn being implemented by Sebastian McKinsey while working at Facebook, the initial design received feedbacks from other companies and the project was put into its own GitHub organization. Facebook kept investing in it during the following years, but major contributions came from the open source too. The fact that Yarn is not operated by Facebook explains a lot here and also means that Facebook is not a number one priority for Yarn. So I was curious who was actively developing Yarn 2 if it wasn't Facebook. So I pulled up the GitHub contributor graphs to see, and it looks like the lead maintainer here, Mael, he used to work at Facebook but is now at Datadog, is putting in the most work. So I'm not sure what the relationship here is if Datadog is sponsoring his work or if he is doing this just on his free time. Uh, but he has definitely the most commits by far and seems to be putting in the most work. There's definitely some contributions from the community, no doubt about that, um, but it's much smaller. So see, he seems to be um, the force behind the project and the force behind Yarn 2. The other thing that upsets some people is in the blog post announcing Yarn 2, Yarn 1 was referred to as legacy. So it says, what will happen to the legacy code base? And the legacy repository yarn package slash yarn will move over to yarn package legacy to reflect its maintenance status. It will be kept open for the time being, but will likely archive it in a year or two. And people were mostly upset by this because they felt it weird calling yarn one legacy when it was something where you can't even upgrade to yarn two in some circumstances. This was mainly a difference in opinion on what legacy really means and when we should label a technology legacy and when we should not. The real point of contention was we have Yarn 1 and then we have Yarn 2 and Yarn 2 is a breaking change. There is a significant difference in it and it's going to require some migration to go from 1 to 2 and some may not even be able to migrate at all right now. So given that how should we smoothly transition, or how should we transition at all from one to two? So there's a difference in opinion on how that should be done, and that's what we're gonna dive into next. This GitHub issue on the Yarn2 repository was originally about renaming Yarn2 to a different name because it felt like a totally different package manager with what it was doing. So instead of calling it Yarn2, calling it a different name like Barry. Now, 
This eventually just kind of got generalized into a discussion around the release strategy of Yarn V2 because there was a lot of different opinions and a lot of stuff that got into this. Um, as you can see, there's 83 comments here, so we're not going to go through everything, but we're going to go over the two main opposing arguments and then the final solution the maintainer decided to go with. The argument that I felt most people agreed with was the one that Jared gave, and this was in regards when they were thinking about renaming Yarn2 to Barry and keeping the Yarn Docs website, the official one, pointing to Barry and then having a legacy doc site that points to Yarn1. And Jared said, I highly suggest you reconsider Brent's suggested solution. My beliefs are that Yarn2 is a different package manager at the moment since it has no upgrade path for a significant amount of the user base. Big players such as Facebook, Twitter have publicly stated that they cannot use Yarn2 because of the plug and play. Like it or not, they have a large sway when it comes to JS standardization. My worry with your proposed solution is you will damage the reputation of Yarn and kill the thing you've been working so hard on as well. That would be a shame since what you have built is awesome. However, maintainers, including myself, will immediately remove Yarn from all docs so as to avoid confusing people around the installation. The website needs to be Yarn1 with a big banner stating that Barry is the blessed successor and linking to the docs. So Jared wanted total separation, Barry should have its own website, and the Yarn website should point to the Yarn1 docs, and Yarn1 should be Yarn, and Barry should be Barry. But on the other side of things is Devin. He offered a counterexample, and I would say this is similar to what the lead maintainer views on this. So he says, I disagree with the proposals mentioned here. I think the Yarn maintainers had the right idea with the original launch. It might be painful at first as libraries and tools become more compatible, but it's the only way to ensure the adoption of plug and play over the long term. Shipping with plug and play off by default will result in plug and play never gaining adoption. We've seen this already with Yarn1, which has had plug and play support for over a year. So the question is, if it is turned off again, how long do we wait to turn it back on by default? Another year, two, three? Yarn2 is a major version bump, so it won't break anything unless you upgrade. If you try it out and it doesn't work for you, you can always downgrade. But the bug reports that are sent to libraries and tools with incompatibilities are very important to the PNP's adoption and won't happen without this process. I think we need to suck it up for short-term pain for the long-term gain. This is the way. So Devin's main point is if we don't turn on plug and play by default, less people are going to be using it and then less people are going to be reporting bugs as they come up and just the whole plug and play adoption is going to be a lot slower of a process. Personally, where I fit into the argument, I can see where Devin is coming from, but I'm more on the Jared Palmer side of things. I think a smoother migration to the Yarn 2 would be nice, and it seems a bit premature for plug and play. The existing tools don't seem to work 100% with it yet, and even the ones that seem to work, people are running into problems with. So for example, this is an issue that came up where someone just listed all the problems they ran into trying to upgrade a project that uses Create React App, Gatsby, and Next.js. And these are all things that are supposed to work. It looks like he's also using TypeScript, which is supposed to work as well. Um, but there are some extra things you need to do with TypeScript that I've seen. But he ran into a bunch of different problems doing that. Any documents it here. So it's not clear cut or easy to get plug and play to work. At least that is what it looks like. I haven't even tried to get plug and play to work because even if I can get create react app working, I use react native. So plug and play would never even work with that. Okay, before we dive into what the maintainer eventually decided to do, I wanted to mention that Barry is the name of the repository or what they're considering renaming Yarn2 to. to. I don't know if I explicitly said that up until this point, so I just want to clarify that. So if you see Barry places, Barry is what they were thinking about calling Yarn 2.x. All right, so let's dive into things. Uh, so the first one here is, is React Native abandoned by Yarn? Is React Native compatible with Yarn 2.x? Um, the short answer is right here. So let me rephrase it for good measure. If you use 2.x and you don't like plug and play, or plug and play does not work with you know React Native, create a Yarn RC file and add the following line to it. So basically he's telling us to use the node linker. This is the plugin we saw earlier that is experimental. And then he said, again, oops, 
Again, whether you think this should be the default or not is largely irrelevant to us. Not being the default doesn't mean it doesn't exist or that we don't invest in it. Our defaults are the, what our team suggests. It's then up to you to pick the tools you think are best for the job. So he doesn't care if you think node modules should be the default. It's not going to be plug and play is the default for Yarn 2. You're just going to have to deal with it. Should this be named differently? This is Yarn. It will stay Yarn. All right, so they're not going to rename it to Barry. They're going to keep it in this Barry repository, um, but it's going to be Yarn 2. It is not going to be Barry. I think Barry is just like the development name, but honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not sure if they're going to rename Barry to like Yarn 2 or something, uh, at least the repository name. Uh, but it doesn't look like Barry is going to be at least the binary that you use this with. Will installing Yarn Package globally break 1.x projects? Do I need to upgrade now? So people worried about if you do things like brew install Yarn, people will just get Yarn 2. And then a lot of readmes out there assume you're using Yarn 1 right now. And so there's going to be a big conflict. And every readme that uses Yarn and open source right now is going to have to change it. Uh, and so this makes sure they are not going to have to do this. If people install Yarn, they are going to get Yarn 1 by default, and they have to explicitly opt in to Yarn 2. And the way you opt into Yarn 2 is by setting the version of your Yarn. Is Yarn 1.x legacy? Is it going to be deprecated? No. Will plug and play be the default? It looks like the answer is yes up until Yarn 2.1, in which case they're going to make PNP loose mode the default. And for that, Yarn will print warnings should a package rely on undefined behaviors instead of throwing flat out exceptions. Um, but for the most part, I think this plug and play loose doesn't change too much. I think you don't get node modules still, so I assume it's not compatible with React Native. This is the summary. Basically, they're going to change some things, but they're not going to do something major like change it to Barry and have that be the binary that you call. But if you have trouble upgrading to Yarn 2, because plug and play doesn't work with some of the libraries that you're using. You can still use Yarn2 with the node modules plugin, and you can still get node modules. And what I will say is I respect the team for having a vision and following through with that vision, even if the Twitter community does not agree with that and thinks that they should do something else, they are not letting them sway them, which uh, I can respect that. It takes balls to do that for sure. But I am worried here a little bit that this decision could degrade the reputation that Yarn has built in the community for being a really great tool. Uh, we'll have to see, um, but this could negatively affect it. In regards to the experimental node modules plugin, I gave that a try and upgraded to Yarn 2 and see if that worked with React Native. And surprisingly, it worked fine. Also, Node worked fine. But surprisingly, Create React App did not. So the area you're looking at here is what I got when I just did yarn start in my project, which just runs React scripts start. It says, cannot read property constructor of undefined. Uh, as you can see, this is a super vague message and it doesn't point to like a line of code or anything. So I was kind of stuck at this point and I didn't feel like putting any more time trying to debug this because it was super vague and there's really not a lot of debugging stuff on yarn yet. And I'm not even sure if this is a Yarn issue or a Create React app issue. I'm honestly not even sure what this issue is related to. Uh, so I kind of just dropped that and abandoned Yarn 2 for now. And that is pretty much where we're at with the Yarn 2 situation. I posted this meme on Twitter because this reminds me a lot of Python 2 and Python 3, unfortunately. And that whole situation created a huge fragmentation in the Python community where libraries would only work with one version of Python and there would be a, just a total split between the people that use Python 2 and the people that use Python 3. And so I'm afraid that we're going to see some of that where people are going to stay on Yarn 1 and then we're going to see other people that are switching to Yarn 2 and then stuff's going to work with plug and play and some stuff isn't. Um, and I think it's going to be a little bit of a mess for a while. Uh, but we will see with that. Now I'm interested also to see if Twitter and Facebook end up getting the node modules plugin to work and they end up actually upgrading to Yarn 2 or if they actually stick to Yarn 1 for a while um, just because there is still some migration with Yarn 2. We'll see if they have trouble or not doing that. My plans are to wait a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, and then give Yarn 2 another try. And then up until then, probably use Yarn 1. And I use workspaces, so I'm not going to switch to NPM. I'm going to stick with Yarn 1. Um, but I'm curious, what are your guys' plans? You're going to switch over to NPM. Did you get Yarn 2 working? 
Did you get plug and play working? Let me know in the comments below.